Welcome to Blank Tape. I'm Kurt. And I'm Anson. And this is Volume 2, Track 17. I find your lack of metal disturbing. Recorded on Wednesday, March 20th, 2019. Put on your headphones and let's jam. Whew. All right. All we right. Made it. <laughs> Success. Yeah. Mission accomplished. All right. All right. Good show. We can go home now, right? We got it all on tape, right? Yep. You're recording yep, all that? Yep. <laughs> all right. Good deal. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's dive right in. What you got on your coaster tonight, Kurt? I went to the store to get some groceries, and I saw, I guess, the new seasonal zen for Shiner. It's Shiner Lemon Pills. Not pill, oh. not pills made of lemon, but Pilsner. When life gives you lemons, brew beer. The months, Is that Pills with a Z? <laughs> uh, pills with an S. Oh, okay. Uh, so the months keep getting warmer, which is why we brewed Shiner Lemon Pills. It's a crisp, clean finishing pills brewed with Meyer lemons and lemon drop hops, giving it just a splash of ref- refreshing citrus flavor. So remember, no matter how hot it gets, you can always add some zest to your summer. So I guess they released it a little early, but it's a, it's a pretty standard lemon flavored Pilsner, and it's, it's good. Hmm. Pills here, as they say. <laughs> yes, as uh, the Left 4 Dead meme. Pills! <laughs> well, all I have is some water in my uh, my little water bottle thing here. Um, I was I had a uh, uh, classic uh, diet root beer A&W with dinner, but I finished it already, so there was none left. Um, okay. So back to the usual water. Uh, all right. Yep. Uh, let's see, follow-up. Um, have you tackled the the second bit of Patreon homework we got in February yet? Uh, let's see, uh, second half February, uh, no, I have not yet. Oh, Uh, man, okay. Need to, but yeah, I've been, I'm bad on homework. I got, I got one down out of four so far, (laughs) so I need to to catch up. Okay. Um, Yeah. And then as far as coding for me, I know I actually went and uh, spoke with HR recently about it. And they said, oh, we might be able, you can use our programs here at work and maybe you can learn a little something. But I think they were like, if you want to go super intense coding, um, you know, it has to come out of your department's budget. So if it's not readily related to your current position, it might Mm -hmm. not be... Uh, beneficial, so I was like, oh, okay, but... Huh. Yeah, but, that makes... Yeah. A little bit of, little bit of a improvement there on the otherwise uh, perpetually non-completed homework for me. <laughs> yeah, we're... It's, uh... We got spring fever, I guess, or something, but, uh... Or we're still stuck on spring break, which was just a couple weeks ago, or last week, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you uh, do you sense spring break at all? Because you don't. I mean, my wife is a teacher, so I get a, I have a connection to the uh, to the school calendar. But uh, do you like have a feeling of when spring break is going down, or does it just feel like another week in March to you? Uh, for the most part, it just feels like another week in March. Uh, but I always know that spring break usually happens around uh, St. Patrick's Day and your birthday. So. I'm like, mm-hmm. whenever that starts creeping up, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's spring break time, but I'm at work, not yeah. partying it up on a beach. <laughs> yeah, doing no uh, no spring break related activities. Yeah, oh. no, uh, no jello body shots or anything like that. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's MTV Spring Break TRL Live. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's see. What's new? What's new? Okay. Uh, shout outs. Uh, oh, shout sh- outs. Yes, yes. Of course, because you know they paid. They paid the dollar. So this is the part where we shout out to our patreons on our patrons on Patreon. So mom and dad, Wayne and Pam. It still feels weird to call them by their first names. So I'll just say mom and dad. Uh, here's your shout out. Cha ching. There you go. All right. Corrections. 
corrections. I was looking up the rodeo artist, um, and I think it had to have been three years ago because last year they said it was Alicia Keys. Or sorry, 2017 it was Alicia Keys. 2016 I was trying to look and I don't remember. Like it wasn't saying anything, any of the names that stood out to me. So it must have been somebody who was not memorable. But I was trying to remember like who was the artist that we saw the last time I went to the rodeo, which was two or three years ago. Not really sure, but. Yeah, nobody really stood out that I could remember, so, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, well. Yeah. Nothing exciting there in terms of follow-up. Yeah, uh, I was I was going to say, listening back to the same episode, I, I was, you know, the last couple of tracks we put out, we were so confident, you know, flying high to the sun, like, oh, no mistakes ever, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it came crashing down. Our, our little wax wings melted, and we came hurtling back down to Earth. Um I did Memory include perfect, yeah. Yeah, I included a, a note in the. Uh, I clu- included a link in the show notes about chroma keying, so you can visit that to get the explanation of blue screen versus green screen. So that's handy. But I did want to clarify, at least on my behalf, that when I mentioned that Jessica Jones and uh, Daredevil, not Daredevil, the 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 the, when the mm-hmm. Jessica Jones and Punisher. The last two remaining uh, Marvel Netflix shows had been canceled. I didn't articulate like the link I included in the show notes stated that Jessica Jones season three has already been uh, recorded and processed. And so that will still air on Netflix. But then that is going to be the absolutely last bit of new Marvel Netflix material. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and then we were both wrong when it came to mentioning Night at the Museum because you <laughs> you thought it was you thought it was uh someone you thought it was uh uh the the gentleman from the office. I said it was Danny Glover, but in fact it was actually uh the actor Bill Cobbs who played the third security guard from the movie Night at the Museum. Oh man. So we were getting old. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're getting old and we're we can't keep our actors straight. So mm-hmm. And those were all the corrections that I uh, caught from last time. Yeah, good deal. All right. So, news tidbit of the week, which, uh, man, just there's just so much going on. I feel like we're just going to become nothing but uh, a news show at this point. But <laughs> what have we got going on, Anson? So, a while ago, we mentioned, um, must have been last fall, there was a show where we talked about Air Power, which was... Oh, no, uh, it was the beginning of the season. Oh, the very first one. Okay. Yeah, with Heather. Because, yeah, that's because we expected it to be out in 2018, and mm-hmm. it was not. Um, so that's, again, to remind that's Apple's charging mat, where you can put your phone and your watch and your AirPod case down um, mm-hmm. all at the same time on this little charging mat and charge you with things wirelessly. Um, mm. They had initially announced it like a couple of years ago, but it uh, was not on schedule at all because i guess they had some trouble with it overheating or they couldn't get the the stuff to work um i'm not really sure what the deal was but uh anyway there are rumors that it's coming back on track now because in one of the beta software updates um somebody inspected some of the internal code stuff and found that there was some mention of air power here and there Mm -hmm. um they apple also just released a um updated airpods case so AirPods are those little wireless ear earbuds where you you put them in a little dental floss case, what it looks like, and you pop it open. And you can charge them in there. Um, they just came out with the second version of AirPods, which are um, I think they have a slightly longer battery life, like an hour or so, not a ton more battery life. But they also have a wireless charging case, so you can um, supposedly use it on the new AirPower mat. And so. We're thinking that's going to be announced sometime soon. That it's actually coming back on track. Um, so we'll see when that comes. Okay. Hopefully, twenty nineteen. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Um, I just bought a little uh, cheap uh, wireless charger for my phone for me and my wife. So we each have one now, and they're pretty handy because you just set your phone down. You know, you don't have to plug it in when you go to bed and stuff. So. Oh wow. I don't know if I'll get an Air Power because it's going to be really expensive, probably. Um, and the one we bought on Amazon was like twenty bucks. You know, so. Yeah, and all, all you need to do really is just find a Zach Levi as Shazam and he'll point his finger at your phone and then it'll just automatically charge back up <laughs> if it doesn't explode. <laughs> yeah, you're rolling the dice there whether you're going to have a phone afterwards or not. But, you're charged, you're charged, you're charged. <laughs> ah, my phone! Sorry! <laughs> That'll be fun. That'll be a fun movie. 
Yeah. Uh, so next on my little list is uh, some problems with Boeing jets recently. Um, oh, no. Yeah, there's a couple weeks ago, there was a crash of a, I think, an Ethiopian Airlines uh, flight where it was a... Uh, this 737 Max jet that Boeing produces, and mm-hmm. uh, or it's I call it a jet, but it's like an air, you know, a massive airliner. And uh, Airbus, Airbus is a different brand. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, same kind of thing. Um, so there was a crash of that one, and then there was another crash, and so there were like two crashes of the same aircraft within a few weeks, and so uh, the rest of the countries in the world were like grounding these planes. And then the FAA, the federal aviation administration finally said, yes, let's go ahead and take them out of service. Um, so Boeing is in some hot water for this, this jet that they're having problems with. Um, apparently it's something to do with, uh, some of the sensors controlling the pitch of the plane. And if the sensor isn't working, then the plane tries to nose itself down repeatedly and the air and the pilot has to keep pulling up to correct it. And eventually the aircraft just like noses itself down and like, ends up crashing so it's it's not good they have to figure out what's going on with the software and stuff but uh so i just thought it was worth mentioning because it's something that i was uh, i had heard about recently um as a software developer you know flight software stuff so um, right and back to apple news there's uh oh yeah your your event's supposed to happen in five days isn't it yes there's that that media event where we're gonna maybe hear about services and stuff. We're not really sure. Maybe Apple news, Apple music slash movie things. Maybe Apple's going to have like a video streaming service, like Amazon prime, you know, who knows? Uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the meantime, they've been doing these little mini announcements, which is kind of crazy. Um, Cause usually they just save the product announcements for like their big shows and stuff, you know, but uh, like I said, they mentioned the AirPods they released. And earlier this week, they also released a new um, iPad mini and iPad. Uh, so the iPad mini is the kind of half size, iPad that's very popular uh, for pilots and stuff. And um, I say for pilots because that's like a, the software company that I work for does uh, apps for pilots and stuff. Um, and so it's a, ah. it's a popular device and um, because it fits in your cockpit and it's not too big. But the problem is Apple hadn't updated it in a very long time. And so it had a older processor that was very slow. And um, so apps didn't run very fast on it and it was kind of always running out of memory and stuff. Um, but we are very happy that they finally announced a new one. And so everyone who has an old iPad mini from several years ago can now buy an updated version and our software will work much better for them. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Um, yeah. So the final little bit of news that I had was, um, something more personal. My wife has just started a master's program. Um, Yay! it is a online, a wholly online program. Kind of like you were saying yours was like a half online, uh, MBA, um, but she is a music teacher, and so she is doing a music education online master's. So classes officially started yesterday as we record this, and uh, we wish her the best in her studies. You'll have uh, to address her as Master Jablinski from now on. Yeah. Now, when I met you, I was with the learner. Now I am the master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's congrats. I know I've... Yeah. Uh, I know I've had the occasional thought of like, oh, what if I go back to school and did like an online doctoral thing for music or something since I have the master's and I think logically that means I could automatically progress to the next level. But I don't know, that would involve having oodles of money. Um, But we are going to be going to Oklahoma this weekend. And so who knows, maybe I'll finally get my slot machine revenge and strike it rich this weekend. Oh, yeah. Where the uh, where the wind goes sweeping over the plane, as they say. Indeed, indeed. What's that for? For family or is it? Uh, yeah, family? actually, Casey's cousin is getting married this weekend, so we've uh, right. we're making a little bit of a trip, a mini trip, as it were, my own version of spring break, and uh, we're gonna go just chill in uh, Oklahoma for a little bit, visit, catch up with Casey's side of the family, and. Uh, get to hit up some casinos and uh, along the way. Nice. I forget that you're really close to Oklahoma because Dallas is just right there. You know. So. It's, oh yeah, uh, it's it's surprising how many Texas and uh, Arkansas license plates you'll see in the parking lot mm-hmm. of these casinos. Sometimes mm-hmm. you figure like more, well, and that's and it it's you know it suits them just fine. I'm sure you know they're able to drum up business that way and. 
convince people on hot streaks to, oh, why don't you just uh, stay in the hotel for the night, have a nice steak dinner and all that stuff. And Yeah. I mean, it, you know, they, hey, they treat you like royalty. So it's like, hey, mm-hmm. not, not, a, not, a bad, uh, not a bad way to spend the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Or make a day trip of it, at least. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. I know, yeah, like I was saying, so much news going on, so I'll try and breeze through. So March 12th, uh, just eight days ago, marked the 30th birthday for the World Wide Web. So happy birthday, Internet. Pretty crazy. Uh, There was a college admissions bribery scandal that's just unfurled the last couple weeks, and so... Crazy stuff with so even celebrities and r- other rich people basically paying this guy to basically illegally spruce up their resumes and fake their test scores and stuff like that to try and get into these schools. And so that's oh, that, that's been a whole mess. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there was a major terrorist attack in New Zealand in the in the city of Christchurch. There were two different mosques, I believe, that were attacked by an individual, and so it was very sad for the con- country because I believe it was you know forty nine people that ended up being killed, and that's like you know major major for the country of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So we're certainly sad about that, and anyone across the world that's affected by terrorism. Um, and then, let's see, James Gunn is back on to direct Guardians of the Galaxy 3 after he finishes up with Suicide Squad 2. And Disney... Yeah, that was, we talked about that earlier. That was a, uh, a news item we talked about last year at some point. Yeah, in the summertime when after the big, uh, you know, alt-right, guy stirred up the twi- Twitter mobs based on old stuff he had said in the past and had since apologized for and then, you know, Disney fired him. But then it turns out uh, that Disney never even knew or had planned to search for a replacement. So it was mm-hmm. kind of like a it almost seems like a, okay, we gotta we gotta fire him to look good for public and you know, we'll we'll let this stew and and uh, you know go off the public's radar, and then we'll come back in a triumphant moment and be like, "All right, you're rehired." Huh. So that's interesting. I didn't I didn't hear about that. Hmm. And to go along with that, officially as of midnight uh, earlier this morning, uh, the Disney acquisition and merger of Fox Film and TV has completed. So now they have X Men and Deadpool and uh, Fantastic Four and all the other and the Simpsons and a whole bunch of other stuff now. Oh wow! Yeah, so Disney's all in control of that now. <laughs> so I know all the nerds, all of us nerds, care about having the Marvel Cinematic Universe done right uh, going mm-hmm. forward. Uh, but we'll have to see how it affects all those other items, such as uh, you know. James Cameron's Avatar and et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. huh. It's hard to remember what's all in what what company because there's so much going around. But yeah, right. Huh. But yep, that is. Uh, I know I kind of breeze through my parts, but you know I think they're just like boop. You know, you just touch on them. You know, yeah. hit. And uh, obviously, we'll include links to all these news stories in the uh, in the show notes, so you can peruse those at your leisure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, sounds like that's the news. Um, <laughs> and that's the news. And, that, and, and that's the news. Um, so what are we talking about now? I don't know. We got, a uh, we got, uh, some, like, little mini comics down here at the bottom. Um, not like, it's in our, in our topics list. Uh, down here I see card games. Are you interested in card games? I like a good card game. So I, uh, this was back when we were talking about, we had our full episode about board games, right? You remember where that came from? Or, uh... Right, and we, we were, we were just talking about so many other different kinds of board games that you were like, ah, next time we'll have to talk about card games. Mm -hmm. And we, we kind of lightly touched on card games, but I don't think we went into a whole, uh, discussion on it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um... 
I guess I can start with some of my childhood favorites, as I mentioned here. Um, I put this bottom one closer to it's closer to the bottom of the list, but I'm going to move it up a little bit. It's called uh, Double Solitaire. is an old favorite of mine. Um, okay. And when I when I think of Double Solitaire, I think of going to my grandparents' house uh, in Dallas, in Plano. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back in the day when I was growing up and stuff. And um, well, the way Double Solitaire works is, you know the game Solitaire where you lay out your, your seven stacks and you try to put the aces on top and everything. Um, right. That like was my classic. That was my grandpa's favorite card game. Yeah, just the classic Windows Solitaire game. Um, well, hmm. Double Solitaire is a race game, and so what you do is you get two decks of cards if you're playing with two people, and so they sit across from each other, and you each play a game of Solitaire, but you share ace piles. So if your partner, or not your partner, the person across from you, uh, or if anybody you're playing with puts down an ace of spades, and you have a two of spades, you can put your two of spades on top of their ace. Um, oh. And so the object of the game is to get as many of your cards onto the piles as fast as possible. Um, so eventually you might get stuck like you do in Solitaire. And when you're stuck, you the game ends and you count up how many cards you got to put out. And the person who put out the most cards wins. Um, mm-hmm. So it's easy to understand because you just play Solitaire, but you make it a fast version. <laughs> so, um, And of course it's called Double Solitaire, but you can go with you know four or five people and when you get it to be a larger party game, it's a lot of fun to have a lot of people all trying to throw their cards around and beat people to slap down the next card in the, in the sequence and stuff. So, right, uh, that was always a favorite one of mine. Um, did you have any like card game favorites growing up or what? Uh, growing up, I mean, I I remember I had a Garfield set of War cards. They were like specifically branded with Garfield the Cat. I remember those early earlier in my childhood as a as a card game that mm-hmm. you know I'd play with my sister against my sister or by myself I don't know mm-hmm. um, that's definitely an early card game I mean I'm sure if I go back and listen to our board game episode maybe I covered um, a fair number of the ones from childhood but mm-hmm. yeah so there's <clears throat> so I remember that one was a big one. Um... My grandparents also taught me a game, the German game called Scott, or I guess it looks like it looks like Scat. It's S K A T, but um, it's a. I have to look up the rules, but it's a. It's the kind of game where you have. Uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember now. It's the kind of game where you like draw and you go in turns in a circle, mm-hmm. and um, you start off with. You, everyone starts off with like five penny, five pennies or so. And um, you, like, draw a card and you discard to try to get, like, a certain combination. And when you're ready, when you think you have a good combination that no one else can beat, it's kind of like blackjack. You're trying to get to, like, 21, I think, something like that. Okay. Um, When you have a good combination you think no one can beat, you knock on the table. And then everyone else gets one more round. And then whenever it gets back to you, you show what you have. And if anybody can beat it, then you lose, you know. So it's kind of like a guessing game if you can kind of bluff your way to get something good lucky get, get lucky and get something good early or or not or and then if you lose you have to lose a penny and so then you lose your five pennies and then you lose the game <laughs> you get to sit out so kind oh, of a okay. fun i'm probably butchering the rules but that's like the general idea another good like party game where lots of people can play and stuff and you kind of work around and pretty simple rules and stuff so i can't remember if i talked about this card game um in the scouts i remember on camping trips at whether it was camping trips or summer like my week-long um stay at camp strake in conroe but there was a card game we would play called mal do you do you know of this that sounds kind of familiar what's the story the, st- the story is is that you're not allowed to tell the rules and you just have to learn the rules as you play the game Mm, that's so it's familiar. Yeah, so it's kind of like hazing, but not really hazing. As far as like you know, you you get cards and you just kind of have to, you know, so you get dumped with you know cards or whatever like that, and you're desperately you're watching the other people and you're trying to do this stuff, but then you <laughs> get penalized because you do something wrong. Uh huh. So yeah, it was kind of like okay, you had you just had to you had to be super observant. And just kind of learn as you went along, and I'm sure we can cheat and find a wiki article on it. But I remember that you know this this was the days before you you just had a smartphone in your pocket and you could access the internet 
at, at your whim, at your whimsy, and 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 figure out these rules. So how did it work? Did you have to have? I guess you had to have at least one person who knew how to play, and then he would just like teach everyone else as you go, or like how does? Yeah, the older scouts would generally teach the younger, newer scouts in the troop, mm-hmm. and then uh, as you went on, you just kind of picked up the rules. And then, you know, if you'd been playing it for a while, then you just knew the rules of the card game and you could just, you know, play mm-hmm. on without uh, having to uh, <laughs> slow down or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Did I spell it right here? Is that M-A-O? Do you know how to spell Is it a... That's a good question. I have no idea how you would have <laughs> spelled it, but I'm sure if we do a Google search, we can uh, we can figure it out. I'd be scared to Google it because I don't want to learn the rules and ruin it for myself. Oh yeah, so maybe you'll uh, teach me sometime. <laughs> yeah, I well, I would have to cheat and go on Google and relearn the rules. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, maybe your dad remembers or something. So we can find somebody who could get us into it. I don't think not 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 any of the well, Mister Jones and none of the uh, other dads and moms. I don't think they well. Mostly dads, but, you know, moms helped out, too. But mm-hmm. um, I, they never stepped in to actually play the card game. Like I said, it was definitely the older scouts in the troop who knew how to play the game. And so it just kind of got passed on as uh, as kind of like a, a torch, uh, if, mm-hmm. you, if you will. Yeah, that makes sense. Thinking about going up through my, uh, through my school days, too, like uh, when I think of... Uh, sorry, I'm taking some notes here as things are coming to me. Um, so there's like the, the childhood phase, which is like, you know, the games with my grandparents. Um, mm-hmm. and then there's like the school phase, which is, uh, a variety of games we used to play probably mainly in orchestra because for whatever reason, we always seem to have time <laughs> to sit around and play card games in orchestra. <laughs> wow. Um, Mr. Jones just taught you all you ever needed to know. And then after UIL, he's like, ah, screw it. Just do whatever you want. Just do whatever you want. <laughs> Just leave me alone in my office. Don't bother me. I want to learn from a teacher. Besides that. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, so I think it was like junior high orchestra too. Where like we just had time. It could have been other classes too. But we had time to play. And so um, the first one is the obvious like speed, which is just a classic one versus one where you, mm-hmm. uh, you have five cards in your hand. You got to put cards down in the middle as fast as you can. Um, probably the most popular one that I remember people getting into was Egyptian rat screw. Um, Isn't that spoons? No, that's rat screw is the one where you deal the cards out to everybody. And then you, everyone puts down one card at a time in order mm-hmm. in the circle in, in the middle. And then if two of a kind pop up, you have to slap it and you get to take those. Uh, if it's like, if it's a sandwich, like four, six, four, you can slap mm-hmm. that. Um, and then if it's like, you put down a Jack, then the person, who plays next to you has one chance to put down a jack or a double or something, or a jack, queen, king, or ace. If it's queen, they have two chances. King is three and ace is four. Um, and so, sorry, the point of this game is to get all the cards. And so it's like you're putting down cards one at a time, and then if there's a, a combination that appears, you have to be the first one to slap it, and then you get to all those cards that are in the stack. Um, mm. So that's just a popular game because it was kind of easy to understand, and it's a fun, like, slapping game. Um it wasn't actually my favorite. Um, yeah, no one likes getting slapped. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> the one that I remember liking a lot was uh, called VC. We called it VC, uh, which stands for Viet Cong, um, also known as Tian Lin, I think. And I had to look up the rules because it was kind of complicated, but that one is kind of a, a more interesting game with some more strategy where you uh, you kind of lay down cards in a hand... And you, like, let me see if I can summarize. You try to, like, make a pair or a three of a kind, and the person next to you has to, like, make a higher three of a kind or a four of a kind or something. And so you're, like, trying to one-up each other's hands. And then whoever, like, wins the hand gets all those cards or something like that. I can't remember exactly how it works, but... Um, so kind, kind of, of like reverse poker? Yeah, it's like it's like a more strategy to it than uh, Ratsker, which is just kind of like luck and speed, you know? Okay. Uh, one of the fun parts of VC was that, and the rules online actually said this too, is that if you can cheat and get away with it, you're encouraged to do so. So if you can like accidentally like lay down an extra card without telling anybody, then, oh, I remember the point was to get rid of your cards. Like you wanted to 
oh. you don't have to lose your card. So if you, you could like, if you could sneak in an extra card underneath the one you're supposed to put down and no one noticed, then you were like, that was fine with you. Or you could like peek at someone else's cards without telling them, you know. So it was kind of like a a fun game to play, you know, with your student friends and stuff. Um, okay. What about you, Inquire? Did you have any <laughs> card game pastimes in? Uh, I think in choir, they would just show us like, you know, musicals or other movies or something, you know, Mm -hmm. we, or, um, I don't know, as, as time grew on in high school, like, you know, someone would try and be on the computer, uh, trying to use one of the, uh, you know, HTTPS in order to get around the, the, the district firewalls or something. So we could Mm -hmm. try and get on YouTube or, or just (laughs) some joke website. Or, you know, we just do homework or something, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably for the best because my next story from school, which is kind of funny, is um, we had a, a theory class that I took my senior year, like a music theory class at high school. Oh, yeah. And um, Mr. Headspeth taught it, the band director. Mm-hmm. And uh, whenever we had downtime in that class, uh, David Hernandez, the trumpet player, would teach us all how to play Texas Hold'em. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Some of my favorite memories from music theory are learning how to analyze music and chords and stuff, and also David teaching us how to play Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Isn't there so, that was uh, now? Correct me if I'm wrong, but was, didn't he? Didn't David bring like his original first generation? Xbox to the high school, like you know, this had to have been late spring, almost the end of uh, junior year or something like that, and uh, we were all in the band hall because I like came over from the choir room and we were all just playing Halo or something in the band That's, hall. That would probably be true. I don't remember that, but that does sound that does sound like something. I know do. there's yeah. a photo on an old photo on Facebook where I'm like my mouth's hanging open, slack jawed as I'm staring at this. Uh, video game. Yeah, that was when it was just new. Like, it had just come out and everything. Yeah, right? Microsoft but... is like, hey, we're going to make video games. And now, what is this I hear tangentially about Google now recently is coming out and is like, oh, hey, Go- we're Google and we're going to make video games too. So, is this mm-hmm. going to be like the next version where, like, oh, now Google has a major, uh, well, they're saying it's not going to be a, a console, but. Does that mean that Google's going to enter into the console wars as well? So, just to... I looked it up really quickly. Halo 1 came out November 2001. So, I guess that was our, like, 8th grade year or so? Or ninth grade? Um, uh, no, eighth, yeah, eighth it would have been the fall of 8th grade. So, yeah, maybe, so, maybe it was, like... Yeah, it had to have been, like, you know... Obviously, at some point in high school. So, I just remember I ha- I still had, like, poofy like slicked up hair and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So the Google thing, um, I believe it's called Google Stadia. I've just barely heard about this. We talked about it a little bit at work today, uh, or they were talking about it in the, in the video games chat room a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. They were saying that it's basically what the idea is. It's like a Netflix for games. So instead of uh, you having a console yourself, you just play the game in your browser and it can be like a, super graphics intensive game but instead of like having the console or the hardware yourself you you're like streaming it and so you like have a controller that you're like using with your computer or whatever and you're like playing this you know 40 frames or 4k 60 frames per second video game um and they're using these crazy fast servers and they got this technology to like stream it and everything because the main problem with that sort of thing is like latency where there's like delays in sending the the signals back and forth you know but they say they've solved it or whatever so I need to watch it because I'm kind of curious, but I, that's pretty much all I know about it. Um, so. Huh, interesting. I wonder how uh, Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo are all going to be reacting to that. If they're going to be like amateurs, you don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, then again, Steam also developed the Steam Box, and we do actually have that as well. But that's essentially like a, basically a mini portable hard drive that you can download all your Steam games onto and then plug that into your... Well, you plug it into your computer, but then you also plug it into your TV, and then it's a way to play your computer games on a TV, mm-hmm. as if they were a console. Huh. Yep. I guess I guess that means that Google would be making its own games, like you said, because I can't imagine that, like... Or they're going to be licensing uh, their servers or whatever to be able to handle these, uh, you know, new uh, 
triple A titles and stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I can't imagine like Sony be like, oh yeah, sure, you can stream our PlayStation games whenever you want to. You know, that would not go well. So. Well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't under, I can't even begin to understand how it works for Twitch itself because like Twitch being one of the most popular streaming services as far as for like video mm-hmm. games and stuff. Yeah. And I know, I I know there's people. Obviously, there's a bunch of live, uh, live action stuff and uh sh- you know small well sorry like nerdist and geek and sundry are actually making shows for, for this format and then you have critical role which does live D and so does matt colville mcdm productions with the chain of acheron um which that's starting right now and that's as an aside uh that's been super fun to watch mm-hmm. um but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it'll be like. I mean, does that is that going to be like an easy plug in? So it's like, oh hey, I'm just here at my laptop. Uh, let me just boot up my Stadia account, and uh, oh, we're gonna go ahead and play the Super Lead Exploder Bullet Time game, <laughs> and then you're just like streaming or whatever. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll see. I know that this has like tried to happen in the past, like. Uh... I can't remember the name of any of the previous companies, but there have been attempts to do this in the past, and I know that has, hasn't really like worked a whole really well, as far as I know. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. The only other thing I could think comparable would be comparable comparable to this would be uh, like emulators, like mm-hmm. downloading mm-hmm. like a Super Nintendo emulator and playing Super Nintendo games on your like laptop or something. Which mm-hmm. I I did do that for some like. Uh, that's how I was able to play uh, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars on my uh, laptop before I actually went to Austin in a retro video game store and bought a physical copy of the Super Nintendo cartridge of that oh, game. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep, so I own a piece of history. So that would be... I know you, Mr. Hanson, just got yourself a fancy uh, Nintendo Switch from your wife for your birthday, so that would be a... Uh, that would actually probably be a really cool game to play on Nintendo Switch. I think we have we when we were in New York, uh, we went to the Nintendo store in New York, and um, I got a, a sick hoodie, a Nintendo New York hoodie that I like a lot. Um, and we also got the uh, SNES Classic. I might I might have mentioned this before on the podcast. I'm not really sure if I have or not, but um, those are the little mini. They have a NES Classic and an SNES Classic, and they're like little mini versions of the consoles that come with full-size controllers, but they do HDMI, and they have, like, all these games oh, built in. Okay. Um, and I think Mario RPG is in there, but I haven't checked. We had it plugged in for a while, but we, we took it out because there wasn't a good place to put it on our on our dresser. Um, but uh, Yeah, same. We have all my Super Nintendo games, and uh, I think if they're not still on the bookshelf, then they've been packed back into, like, a shoebox or something and mm-hmm. stored until... I can get some sort of replacement device that is an analog for the Super Nintendo cartridge system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd love to have that plugged in, so if I'm tired of playing my super awesome Xbox One, I can just be like, I'm going to kick it old school and play some Super Nintendo. Yeah, a blast from the past. Yeah, no kidding. Maybe I'll finally beat Donkey Kong Country or Mega Man X. Yeah, Duck, the the cool thing about the SNES Classic is that it has a, uh, you can, if you reset the console, you know, it has like the power lever and the little reset lever. Right. Uh, if you reset it, it doesn't actually reset. It just kicks you back out to the menu where you can pick your game. And so what you can do is like pause any game anywhere, even if there's no pause menu in the game, and like copy that memory state, and you can just try again over and over again. So oh, we, wow. when we're playing like Donkey Kong Country or something, or... Um, some other really hard game. Uh, uh, it's like Knights and Swords or Swords and something. Um, uh, was it uh, Ghosts and Goblins or Castlevania? Goblins, Ghouls and go- Ghouls and Goblins or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Go- uh, yeah. Go- it's either like Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Goblins. Yeah. So that one we can like. I'd love get... to get a copy of that. I don't have that one. You get through a level, you know, like you get barely through a level. And you freeze it, and you like save the copy, and you start over again. You know, so you can like make instant saves. So it's it's kind of helpful, although it's kind of cheating to get through the levels like that. Um, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. What's that? Is that from Talladega Nights or? 
Uh, no, it's just something Casey's coaches would always say to them in school. So, <laughs> not that they advocated cheating, but the coaches would always joke, "If you're not cheating, you're not trying." <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, there's uh, yeah. I think I might have some pictures of like me and Kiran with all these poker chips around us playing Texas Hold'em in high school. So I'll try oh, to nice. find that if I can. But uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, yeah, let's keep going through because I know you and I behind the scenes have been generating a whole list of like, oh, maybe we could talk about these things in the future. Yeah, and it's just so kind of like more. little random things. Yeah, the last card game on my list was uh, Uno, which is a big favorite of mine. Um, of course, I just I got it for Christmas this year because I asked for it and uh, because I never had it, and so it's just a fun classic game, you know. And indeed, it's, it's simple and it's fun for the whole family, as they say. So. That was uh, just make sure you play the draw four wild card appropriately. Yes, was it us? We were talking about that, or was that? I think else? I mentioned it on our on our uh, board games episode. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's in the rules if you read the fine print. <laughs> Will do. Yeah. All right. What else we got down here? Yeah, let's scroll through as we're both looking. Do do do. I this don't know. Not, this is not related at all, but I remembered another news tidbit is uh, Tesla just announced their Model Y last week. Oh. Um, okay. So they've got the... Well, they had the original Roadster, which is like their super fast whatever one, and they had the Model S for this. Right, the Roadster was built on a on a Lotus chassis. Oh. I, I did a whole graduate course on Tesla, so I am, I am f- fairly familiar with the history and, and how they operate and stuff. Oh, like as a business, from a business perspective? Yeah, that was oh. the whole course is we had to pick a company and then we had to like walk through all points of the company and be able to explain it to our professor and stuff. Oh, nice. So yeah, cool. it was a pretty it was a yeah, it was a several basically a several month long collaborative research project on a company. Hmm. Good deal. Good yeah. choice too. So, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, although uh Elon Musk is no longer the CEO of Tesla, so I think he had to resign. I remember talking to my coworkers about this. He had, he had to resign because he started tweeting some stuff to make it. He was that he started tweeting some stuff that was gonna that made it look like it was uh, gonna like the company was gonna do something else. And basically, the government was like, "You're misleading people because that affected." how people invested or whatever with the company. And so, you know, Elon Musk got fined however much money to him. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, chump change, whatever. But then it was like, oh, crap, uh, you're no longer the CEO of Tesla. So, Yeah, I had to look this up because I keep, uh, I keep trying to, I keep misremembering it. But, yeah, he was, he was in trouble for the tweeting thing, like you were saying, uh, the financial fraud or whatever, by a tweet, and he... Had to step down as a board member, but he's still CEO of Tesla. They're, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. So. Yeah, confusing, but that's. But he's still he's still making flamethrowers. He's still boring away in the earth and mm. uh, you know SpaceX and all that. So anyway, there. So the. The S is their sedan, and then the Model X is their SUV, large SUV. Then they have the Model Three, which is the smaller. Uh, sedan kind of thing and then the Y right. is like a, a smaller SUV um, huh. and uh, I think it looks really cool and it's the first ones are supposed to come out in 2020 so maybe if I save my pennies we can get one in 2020 or 2020. Well once, <laughs> once you have Master Jablinski bringing in the big bucks you'll oh, be yeah. able, you'll be able to yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll see I was going to say are you familiar with um, uh, the Big Bang Theory show I've watched a little bit of it, but I know Sheldon is a character, and I uh, yeah. pretty much it. <laughs> well, the joke I was going to make is their their one friend Howard, who is the token Jew of the of the group of friends, ends up marrying this little Catholic girl named Bernadette. And what's funny is that she ends up, I believe, she ends up becoming a doctor. So then when she and Howard get married, like all the other guys in their friend group, you know, it's like Dr. Cuthra Polly, Dr. Cooper, um, Dr. Uh, Hofstetter. And then it goes to, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Howard, basically. <laughs> and yeah. when they introduce the couple, it's like, 
doctor and Mr. Howard, basically. Yeah. So they kind of like, you know, he's the engineer of the group and he only has his masters, but they kind of poke fun of him. And so yeah. I was... I was thinking that was going to be the similar situation where it's like Master and Mister Jablinski. So, <laughs> yeah, that'll be it. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So let's see. Did you see anything else interesting down here while we were looking? Well, I know it was uh, recently. Um, I found a, uh, it was suggested to me by the almighty YouTube algorithm. Uh, through my videos since I have the YouTube app on my phone and it links directly to my account. Um, but there is a YouTube channel I found called Shredmaster Scott. Mm-hmm. And um, this kind of goes into an idea I had before about like, oh, symphonic metal and, you know, basically how uh, like symphonic orchestral music and metal are essentially like two sides of the same coin. And this Shredmaster Scott... Um, had some videos pop up in my suggestions where it was like, what if Bach did a Slayer song? Or what if Bach did, uh, you know, uh, Iron Man or uh, Crazy Train? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was really interesting because he actually goes through very basic surface level rundown of music theory and tells you about Bach's, um, you know, the prime, the inversion, the retrograde, the retrograde inversion, and he plays mm-hmm. it out on a guitar for the riffs and kind of puts together little, basically little fugues. And uh, it's actually pretty cool. I was I shared it with you the other day, and you were just kind of like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. And I was like, yeah, maybe we just need to do like a whole... Uh, like we just need to go find public domain music and then just write a metal opera using classical <laughs> music that's already there. Yeah, I was really impressed with his uh, his theory stuff. That was a lot of pretty cool. Um, and then yeah, I know uh, like Apple Max have this program that comes for free called GarageBand, and you can you know like put together instruments and stuff. So right, it's kind of fun. So I've I've played around with it a little bit before, but I always wanted to like try to take something and maybe write some intense like metal song just for fun you know to see how it turns out um because you can put in all kinds of crazy drum parts and guitar parts and you'll just like play it you know so um did you hear that blank tape generation it sounds like we have a possible patreon stretch goal if we're making more way more than 20 dollars a month maybe (laughs) we can uh maybe we can compose some symphonic metal for everyone to listen and download we'll produce some real hard rock for the fans exactly the blank generation (laughs) <laughs> but oh, yeah, okay. I mean, it had me also thinking of, um, of course, the late great Sir Christopher Lee actually worked with uh, some metal artists, and I think did I get you a copy of the albums that uh, that he worked on? I think you might have. I remember I was talking about this before. Yeah, because it's Charlemagne. He basically Christopher Lee does like the voice for this, uh, you know, Charlemagne character, and it's basically a, a symphonic metal album that talks about the rise of Charlemagne and how he fights like the Saxons and you know fights against the barbarian hordes to solidify the Holy Roman Empire and stuff Mm -hmm. and I know that you were super big into Charlemagne in high school and stuff yeah it was like for whatever reason I I found that guy's name and I made him my like it was like my avatar for a while you know my first email was like Charlemagne at something something so (laughs) right yeah not that I knew anything about the history or anything about him at all, but I just thought the name was cool. And he was a king, so, you know. Yeah, well, of <laughs> course, we would know him because he played Saruman in the uh, Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies. Um, mm-hmm. But he's also famous because he was in those Hammer uh, English-produced, like, Dracula movies. And so people know Christopher Lee from all of his, like, horror movies that he did, like, in the 70s and stuff like that, but... He's also the dude that was part of the SAS during World War II and did, like, legit secret agent stuff. And I think there's a story that goes around when um, they were on the set for Lord of the Rings and uh, Peter Jackson was giving a note or something about, like, oh, you have to make it sound like you're dying. And, like, Peter, uh, and then uh, Peter Jackson's approach by Christopher Lee is like, well, actually... This is what it sounds like when you're stabbing a man in the back and all the air's escaping, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, Christopher Lee has lived a life." Yeah, he I is that story. one of the most uh, metal people 
that uh, ever graced uh, the face of the earth, it seems. R.I.P. Christopher Lee. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, I remember that story. We got we had all the crazy. Uh, we were huge were slash our big Lord of the Rings fans, and Beth had all those those books about the making of and stuff. I remember that story in there, I think, or something. Maybe it was yeah. in a maybe it was in a documentary on one of the bonus features on the extended edition is where I remember seeing that. But yeah, it's a crazy story. What was this next question you had here about about this? Oh. Uh, just, is it, oh, I guess, like, if, you know, if you basically, if you just troll through public domain and you're like, okay, I'm just going to take this public domain thing and I'm going to just turn it into symphonic metal music, Mm -hmm. is it basically, is it like, if if you do that, do you make it too easy or unfair or do you have to go listen to it and kind of be inspired by it? And then decide to compose your own original stuff. Or do you follow the uh, Shredmaster Scott and you listen to it, and then all you do is just play with the inversion of the retrograde or something, and then you're like, oh, so it sounds similar, but it's not actually because it's the inversion or whatever. I think it depends on how creative you get. I think it's, if all you did was kind of just like drop it in, if just like change the instrumentation, then maybe that's not super creative. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you get if you get clever with it, you know, there was a there was a clip that went around Facebook I remember, and I think it was uh, like a, a, a analysis of classical music, um, and it had like excerpts from all the different major composers of Western music. But it starts off like you know you start off with one and it shows like the composer's head as like the notes. But as time goes on, you're like like a fugue. You're adding in different lines from different composers. Do you remember this video? Oh, that sounds cool. I don't remember it. No. Okay, I'll have to go find it. We'll put it in the show notes. But yeah, it was, you know, so it starts off like, you know, you might have Bach and then Mozart pops in and then Beethoven comes in and then Salieri comes in and like it goes through a whole bunch of uh, different composers and like weaves all their tunes together and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say about... Oh, yeah, like... Uh... You know, rearranging is totally, a, 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 I think, a, a part of the classical tradition. Like, um, one of the pieces that I've been had on my mind recently is a very cool one that I, I'm almost positive we've talked about before is uh, pictures at an exhibition because there is... Uh, Modest Mazorski, my boy. The original was for solo piano, and then he arranged it for full orchestra. Ravel also did a separate arrangement for full orchestra. And then, of course, Emerson, Lake and Palmer did their... 80s rock version of it (laughs) right the 70s yeah it was it was a live i think it was the 70s yeah they were in a they were in a church and like because they had a massive organ in the church and they were just like we're gonna do pictures out of exhibition it was a whole prog rock version where they just played the whole piece live Mm -hmm. and that's an amazing album yeah i like that that's so like i don't think we should we or anybody should feel bad for like wanting to rearrange you know classical music because i think that's part of the it's part of the genre you know it's it's always been a thing to do that i think is is kind of cool so right it's just like uh in a modern sense there's this uh, star wars group this star wars metal group uh galactic empire have you heard of them i have not heard of them well galactic empire takes the music of john williams but they metalify it metalify it metallication whatever adjective you want to use but they basically take the john williams music they crank it up to 666 and then they just make it make it rain blood as they play you know like uh you know imperial march and stuff like that and they do all these arrangements and the music videos are skit like but you have basically all of the major empire sith figures um you know in these music videos and stuff and this and the tracks sound amazing Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just, I know I had another idea that popped in my head as far as, uh, but I'll let you take it away while I try and recollect my thoughts on what I was going to say. There is also a Star Wars jazz album <laughs> that came out. Um, I think you can find it on YouTube, but there's like, they took the Star Wars themes and like somebody made like a jazz version of it. So it's kind of funny. I'll have to put that in. We'll put that in the show notes for sure. But <laughs> All right, play that one song we know again. Yay! <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that was a that was a throwaway joke from um, when Seth MacFarlane's Family Guy. Um, you know, they each did a dedicated special on each of the major original trilogy Star Wars movies. They get to the cantina scene. And, uh, you know, they finish playing the clip, and then they're like, all right, thank you, and then uh, we'll take requests. And then he talks out of the side of his mouth like, play that one song you know again. And he's like, okay, and the band strikes up, and they just <laughs> start playing the same song over. Oh, that's funny. Um, but I know what I was going to say, uh, since we were on the topic of music, is I know recently I, I resent you copies of music that I had uh, orchestrated and put together, and I didn't know if oh, that yeah. was worthy of our time of discussion since you're the one with the theory degree and i i know that there's you know i haven't touched these pieces in quite a while but i still don't have real professional recordings of them and uh would like to someday and uh certainly i could use input on the uh the all creatures of our god and king uh orchestration that i put together for choir and woodwind trio and I guess piano in there, but I thought, does this, excuse me, does this need to be on organ? Does it need handbells as well? I don't know. Uh, I would definitely be down to talk about that. I, I saw the email come in, and I thought it was funny because it was a, you had sent it to me a couple of years ago, several years ago, and then I got the second email you sent about it, and it was still in my inbox, so I got the thread, it was like a threaded reply. I was like, oh, that's oh, a yeah. response to a long one from, from one from a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I need to look into that and check it out. Um, I'd be happy to. That'd be really cool to talk about that. Um, yeah, maybe we could uh, we could get Master Jablinski involved, and we could just uh, appropriate some of her uh, school resources so we can get a recording of it and not have to pay any of the uh, the kids. No, no, no. We could find. I'm sure with your connections, we could find like a, a legit group of professionals to be able to to put something together oh yeah i don't know any choirs though that'd be tricky well i'm sure you could find a professional choir around houston i'm sure they exist yeah i know i know they exist around here but uh the re yeah the reason that prompted it is because at one uh adoration service they had at my church there's a, a young man uh i uh, David Moore, I believe his name is, and uh, you know he's ba you know he works at SMU and around the general Dallas area. But he is a uh, singer, songwriter, musician, and he was telling me, "Oh yeah, I have this uh, publishing company, and uh, you know I'm always looking for singers." Because I told him I, I I sang even though I wasn't singing with the choir uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, oh, here, here's my Facebook contact. And so it reminded me of like, oh, yeah, I should probably email him and just be like, hey, here's something I wrote. I know you have a publishing company. Maybe this looks cool. Maybe this is something you want to publish because I tried to send it to a uh, another uh, fraternity brother who has a publishing company. Uh, but he was like, oh, this arrangement of all creatures of our God and uh, sorry, this arrangement of high flight even though it looks cool, is kind of out of our wheelhouse, and so we couldn't publish it. So I was like, mm -hmm. ah! So. Yeah, I remember that one, too. You told me about that that other piece you put together. Yeah, yeah, High Flight is the one... Now, High Flight is a famous poem that was written, uh, you know, and it's been adopted by the United States Air Force. Uh -huh. um, but... But I came up with this particular arrangement, not listening to any other versions that exist, but uh, I started a uh, independent composition uh, study with Dr. Emmons uh, at Angelo State. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was after my opa, my grandfather, had died. And so I decided, oh, why don't I take a composition class? And then the, the piece of music that I'll be working on, uh, you know, one on one with uh, Dr. Emmons is going to be this high flight piece, and so I put it together, and uh, you know, I think it, you know, it sounds, you know, I think it sounds different, you know, musically different, and I know I was able to at least get a rough recording version of it, but since I wrote it for my opa, who's, you know, like I said, deceased, and Omi's getting up in years, you know, it would be, it would just be a great hope and wish of mine if I could get someone some group together and uh we could try and you know get a professional recording of this 
done and like have it world premiere or something like that. Even if, you know, we could utilize our resources and reach out to YouTube famous singer people and be like, Hey, I wrote this piece of music in honor of my grandfather. I've never had it professionally recorded. Would you do me a solid and, uh, and basically record this and make it a hit YouTube video. So <laughs> then my grandmother has something to listen to. Yeah. You have to get very lucky or you'd have to pay them probably, but yeah. Well, that's why they have Patreons and stuff like that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they should have a, a rewards tier where you subscribe and they'll do a song for you or they'll perform a song for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd have to... Uh, well, I mean, someone like Peter Hollins would probably be at the top of my list of uh, of finding somebody who would be able to put something together. Um, he uh, He's... Yeah, like I said, he's one of these uh, artists on YouTube um, who will do arrangements of... Uh, and he often collaborates with other YouTube singers. I think he's even done, well, uh, you'd find interesting, he does a series of Hobbit drinking songs, Tolkien oh. drinking songs, but he teams up with Hank Green from the Green Brothers. And they, the two of them, you know, with multi-tracking and stuff like that, um, did all the music for it. Oh, huh, that's cool. Yeah, so he he collaborates with other singers, his wife, who's also a singer and has her own stuff. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of cool people like the democratization of the internet and, you know, the YouTube space has allowed all these cool people to come out and make, uh, cover versions or different arrangements or parody versions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think we got time for maybe one more very quick thing. I'm fading yeah, fast so... here. I'm getting sleepy. Oh man. Daylight savings time hit us and it's hit me hard. Oh, I'm, I'm falling to pieces here. Well, okay, well, then we'll be sure to take a look at my compositions and, you know, we'll, maybe we'll, maybe we'll exercise those uh, music theory muscles and we'll go through it piece by piece and we'll see, like, oh, this looks good or, oh, this is weak and maybe you can do something better here or something. Yeah, that'll be fun to listen to them on the show and stuff. I'll put that as a future topic. Good idea. And then, of course, we can show off your compositions as well, too. I think I only had one good one. It was from uh, one piece that I'm actually really proud of. Yeah, it's, we gotta we gotta do that, man. We gotta premiere that. I gotta think about it. It's it's only I wrote a couple things. I had an actual composition class in college, and then I had a counterpoint class. And the piece that I wrote for my counterpoint class is a little fugue that I was pretty proud of because it actually turned out pretty well. I thought um, so. That's the only composition that I think is worth mention. <laughs> But, okay. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we can look at look at it. Mark could actually play it. I never learned how to play it myself, but Mark is a better pianist than I, so he could he could take it away. But I'll have nice. to find mine. I'm sure I have a piano. We should somewhere. interview Mark since we're oh, trying yeah. to think of other stuff. I know I'm looking in the list of like Houston interview question mark. I'm like, dang, we should just interview Mark and see what Mark's doing. Yeah, that's a good one. Mark is Maybe my brother get... for those who are curious. Maybe maybe Beth, unless Beth is like, no, leave me alone. Yeah, I am. Gotta... I am too busy with a child right now, or two. Yeah, one and a half. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, congrats, yeah. Miss mm -hmm. Beth. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, if that's it for now, we have some things to look forward to, and. Uh... Do you still have time for one more? Like you were saying, what's Ooh. one last thing we can hit? What's something easy we can hit? Um, Do you think my this crazy notion of alternate covers of history, or do you want to just talk about Ren Fairs real quick? We can do super quick Renaissance festivals. Um, sure, because I know that's going to be coming up here in the future. So we have... There's a... They call it the Texas Renaissance Festival, and it's it's in the Houston-ish area. It's like an hour north of Houston or so. Um, Conroe? Yeah. Have you ever been to that one? Yeah, I went one time in high school. The uh, the jazz choir uh, encore, we went as like a, basically like a team bonding sort of a trip. So oh, I've been to cool. that one. Um, but yeah, no, it's the, um, uh, the Scarborough Fair is the one up here in Waxahachie. 
uh, south of Dallas that probably similarly takes about an hour to get to. But that's the one I've been going to the last couple of years, and it's been a blast hmm. every year. Mm-hmm. Do you? Uh, this is this is my first time going to any Renaissance festival. The one that we went to at the Texas Rain Fest, like this a few months ago. I feel like it was a few months ago. Maybe it was last summer. I don't even remember anymore. Um, but um, do y'all usually spend like a whole day there, or how do y'all usually do it? Oh no, we'll do the whole day. Mm-hmm. All right. So I mean, it ta- you know it takes some time to get there. So you just make sure you wear comfortable shoes and. You've got a nice little uh, drawstring bag to uh, store water in, and you make sure you... I mean, they have ATMs there, but you make sure you bring enough spending cash because uh, you're going to be... Uh, especially if you have little nieces in tow, you're going to be uh, dropping some change on oh, yeah. food and little gifts because I know I got Twinkles a pair of her little fairy wings, and we are making plans to take Twinkles, Adina, and my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and we're going to see if we can all... Uh, six of us try and go to the uh, Scarborough Fair all together because I think Adina is old enough and definitely Twinkles had so much fun going with me uh, mm-hmm. last year that we're like, yeah, let's all do it. Let's all go to the Scarborough Fair together. Yeah, that'd be fun. Elvia got a little flower crown when we went, so she was decked out in that the whole time. Um, yeah, they had a good, I had a good uh, like muffalata sandwich, surprisingly. I had a good little sandwich that I had. Um, we didn't do the turkey legs, but we did do uh, cheesecake on a stick, which was a big thing of cheesecake on a stick. <laughs> nice. So, as the name suggests. Um, probably my favorite part was the they had a big maze you could go through, and so we walked through the maze, and that was, that was fun. Did um, you watch any of the shows? We saw, they had a jousting thing where it was like Ooh. kind of split up over the course of the day. And right. so we saw the first part where they kind of, um, they announced the four countries, you know, like Germany, England, Spain, and France, I think. Uh-huh. Um, and they each had their own knight and horse and everything and their colors. And they did, did a little thing where they like ran back and forth across the field. It had like a little obstacle course and they had to like end it by jousting their lance through a little hole and everything. And so it was, it was kind of cool. Um, it was, it was outside and a little warm, uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm a creature of the shadows. And so I was, <laughs> um, I was, uh, I was, it was a little warm for me, but, uh, next time I'll probably just, uh, adjust my outfit a little bit. I was already wearing shorts and stuff, but I think I'll wear like workout shorts next time. Cause it's a little easier to stay cool in. Um, but it was fine. Um, yeah. I know the last couple years we've gone, it's however the weather's timed out here in the Dallas area, it's been rainy. So, like, oh, we, we're usually going in, like, pants, but then there's also humidity when it mm-hmm. actually does warm up if it's not raining. And yeah. So, yeah, basically these next two months are going to be prime time for Scarborough Fair. So we'll have to not only go with our church, our group of church friends, but we're, you know, I'm going to try and wrestle my brother-in-law and his family to come with us so we can all journey to Scarborough Fair. You can say, are you going to Scarborough Fair? Exactly. You can sing it too. (laughs) But yeah, I know Twinkle's favorite part. Like, I love going to the shows. Of course, there's a there's a father and son knife throwing show that's always pretty funny. Oh, cool. Um, Twinkles really loved. There was a pair. They were they were new. They were a pair of like gymnasts. They were like a boyfriend and girlfriend, and they were like, you know, it was really funny. And so I got Twinkles like a coloring book from their show because they had that. Oh, um, huh. the one that Twinkles absolutely loved was called Cirque du Sewer, and it was basically as it sounds. There was a uh, an acrobat, and she had her assistant who played guitar, um, but she would walk a tightrope. While, um, you know, she would walk a tightrope, of course, herself, um, but she'd also had trained rats and her cat to kind of do the similar things where they would walk a tightrope or they would do tricks and stuff like that. And so as soon as, you know, we sat through that show twice and then we got back to the apartment because, uh, Ad- uh, Ad- well, Adina and, uh, well, no, I think it was just Twinkles. But Twinkles was staying the weekend at our apartment. So as soon as we got back, like, she grabbed all the collectibles we had on the bookshelves. And she was lining them up as if they were her little rat show. And she uh-huh. was telling them, like, okay, you're going to do this trick now. So it was pretty cute. 
So was it like puppet rats or like actual rats and cats? No, live live actual rats that this uh, acrobat has trained to oh, do wow. circus tricks. Yeah, no, it is impressive. Like she can get the rats to you know, uh, and and the cats um, to do all the different things. Huh. That's that's uh that's crazy. Yeah. So lots of good things going on at the Renaissance Fair, and uh, if you're near one. In your area, you should definitely go because, uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a blast in the past, obviously, with some modern conveniences injected, but it's still a nice little peek into history, and obviously these are uh, hardworking entertainers and, uh, you know, support staff that are trying to bring a, a good experience to you, so you should, uh, you should help them out and obviously go support all the different artisans and craftspeople that make like wooden swords and jewelry and perfumes and whatnot and soap. Just toss a few coppers their way when you have the time. I step into the tavern and trade stories of adventure. <laughs> yep. Right on. Right on. Well, that, that works. We made it through some little mini topics from our list, and yeah, got some plans for the future and stuff. Yeah, cleaning out the cleaning out the attic of a uh, of topics queue, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good deal. Well, if you enjoyed what you've heard tonight, be sure to check out our website, blanktape.show, for all of our episode tracks, past, present, and future. Links to all the topics we discussed, or do send us an email. To stay up to date with the podcast, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for at symbol Blank Tape Show. And you can also find us by searching Blank Tape Show on YouTube as well. We do have a YouTube channel and you can listen to us there as well. You can find the podcast through Overcast and Apple Podcasts or go to our website and save our RSS feed directly to the podcast app of your choice. If you would like to contribute to the Blank Generation, consider becoming our patron on our very own Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash blank tape show. We are but poor entertainers, so any coppers you toss our way. Please, <laughs> sir, I'll need some money. <laughs> Help Kurt buy his SNES games. <laughs> yes. Help yeah. me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Help! Help me! <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's all right. Thanks, Kurt. And thank you, Senor Jablinski. All right. Get some rest. Catch up from that lost hour we lost last weekend. Curses! All right. Until next time. See ya. See ya.